in the manufacturing of heavy industrial equipment, such as pressure vessels. Several essential processes must be followed to ensure the finished product meets the required safety standards and specifications. The process can be broken down into several key steps, smelting, forging, bottom head forming, assembling, welding, heat treatment, x-ray control, hydraulic pressure tests, and delivery. Each step plays a crucial role in producing a safe and reliable pressure vessel. Smelting and forging. This refers to the process of melting and shaping metal to create the various parts required for the nuclear reactor. The first step in the manufacturing process is smelting forging. This process involves heating and melting metal to a liquid state, followed by shaping the metal into the desired form. The smelting forging process is vital to the manufacturing process as it produces high quality materials that are resistant to cracks and defects. The metals used in pressure vessels are typically alloy steels which are known for their strength and ability to withstand high pressure and temperature. Bottom head forming. This is the process of shaping the lower portion of the reactor vessel that holds the nuclear fuel. Bottom head forming is a crucial step in the process, as it requires extreme precision to ensure the bottom head is strong enough to withstand the pressure exerted by the vessel. Once the bottom head has been formed, the next step is assembling welding. This process involves assembling the components of the pressure vessel and welding them together. Assembling and welding. This involves joining the various parts of the reactor vessel together using welding techniques. Welding is a critical process as it ensures the components are joined securely which prevents any leaks or ruptures from occurring. The welding process requires highly skilled workers who are trained in welding techniques, metallurgy, and quality control. X-ray control. This is a non-destructive testing method used to check for defects or weaknesses in the welded joints. After the assembling and welding process is complete, the pressure vessel is subjected to heat treatment. Heat treatment involves heating the vessel to a specific temperature and then cooling it down slowly. Hydraulic pressure tests. This involves testing the reactor vessel by subjecting it to high pressure water to ensure that it is capable of withstanding the pressure of the coolant system. This process is designed to strengthen the vessel and make it more resistant to cracks and defects. The heat treatment process is essential as it ensures the vessel can withstand high pressure and temperature without deforming or breaking. Palmieri TWM's 515 tunnel widening machines are state-of-the-art construction equipment designed for efficiently widening tunnels. The process involves three main stages. Pre-cutting, cutting, and segment placing. Pre-cutting machine, PCM500. The PCM500 is the first stage in the tunnel widening process. It is a powerful machine with a 500 kilowatts motor that enables it to make precise pre-cuts in the tunnel walls. The cutting width of 500 millimeters ensures accuracy and consistency during the pre-cutting phase. The PCM500 is capable of preparing the tunnel walls for further widening, ensuring a smooth and controlled process. Cutting saw blade length. The cutting saw blade used in the tunnel widening process has a substantial length of 8.5 meters. 
This extended blade allows for efficient and effective cutting of the tunnel walls, ensuring that the desired width is achieved. Cutting test on RCK200 concrete. Before beginning the actual tunnel widening work, a cutting test was carried out on RCK200 concrete. This test likely served to validate the efficiency and precision of the equipment and its ability to handle the specific type of concrete used in the tunnel. The pre-cutting machine PCM500 is equipped with a powerful 500 kW motor, providing substantial cutting force to efficiently perform pre-cuts in tunnel walls. The machine's cutting width of 500 mm ensures precise and controlled excavation, guaranteeing a uniform widening process. This combination of high power and optimal cutting width makes the PCM500 a reliable and effective tool for tunnel construction projects, enhancing productivity and accuracy. Segment Placing Machine SPM15 The SPM15 is the final stage in the tunnel widening process. This machine is responsible for placing segments in the newly widened tunnel. With a maximum capacity load of 15 tons, the SPM-15 can handle and position these segments with accuracy and safety. Palmieri's factory was the site for the initial assembling and testing of the TWM's 515. This phase ensures that the machines are in optimal working condition before they are transported to the construction site. Subsequently, the machines were assembled at the Monta Domini Tunnel construction site, where they were ready to commence the tunnel widening work. The widening of tunnels from two to four traffic lanes without interrupting normal road traffic is a complex process that demands efficiency and precision. The solution lies in the deployment of two self-propelled machines, each executing two working steps in an alternate and continuous manner. The first machine in this process is the pre-cutting machine, PCM500. This powerful equipment carries out a semicircular preliminary cut on the widening face of the tunnel. This preliminary cut creates the necessary space for the widening process. To ensure stability and strength, the PCM500 then injects a special grouting material into the newly formed space. This consolidates the preliminary cut and prepares the area for further expansion. Once the consolidation is complete, the demolition and evacuation of the resulting debris take place beneath the newly widened area, including the existing tunnel. The debris removal is carefully managed to avoid any disruption to the normal road traffic passing through the tunnel. The second machine involved in the process is the segment placing machine, SPM-15. This machine erects lining segments, forming the new tunnel arch. These lining segments are meticulously positioned to create a smooth and robust tunnel structure. The SPM-15 carries out this step with accuracy and efficiency. The two machines then alternate between their respective tasks, continually widening the tunnel until the entire project is completed. This alternating and continuous approach ensures that the tunnel remains accessible for regular traffic flow throughout the process. Thanks to the advanced capabilities of the PCM500 and SPM15, the average daily production of finished tunnel widening can reach up to 1.5 meters. This remarkable speed allows for rapid progress, 
minimizing the impact on road users and reducing the overall project timeline. The Taishan Nuclear Power Plant is a landmark project in the history of nuclear power. The project is located in Taishan City, Guangdong Province, China. The plant is a joint venture between the French energy company EDF and the China General Nuclear Power Corporation CGN, which was established in 2007. It was designed to be a showcase of nuclear power technology using the world's first Gen 3 European pressurized reactor EPR. The EPR is a third-generation pressurized water reactor PWR that uses advanced safety features to prevent accidents and mitigate their consequences. The EPR design was jointly developed by the French company Ereva and the German company Siemens. The reactor is designed to operate at a thermal power of 4,000 megawatts with a net electrical output of 1,650 megawatts. The construction of the Taishan nuclear power plant was not without its challenges. One of the biggest challenges was the design and construction of the reactor vessel. The EPR reactor vessel is the largest and heaviest of its kind, weighing over 1,000 to 100 tons and measuring the Taishan nuclear power plant's containment building. is the largest in the world, measuring over 80 meters in height and 120 meters in diameter. The building was constructed using high-strength concrete and steel, which required over 100,000 cubic meters of concrete and 11,000 tons of steel. In addition to the reactor vessel and the containment building, the Taishan nuclear power plant also features a number of advanced safety systems. These include a passive core cooling system, which is designed to keep the reactor core cool in the event of a loss of coolant accident. The plant also features a core catcher, which is designed to prevent the release of radioactive material in the event of a severe accident. The construction of the Taishan nuclear power plant was completed in 2018 and the plant was officially connected to the grid in 2019. The plant is expected to generate over 23 billion kilowatt hours of electricity per year, which is equivalent to the annual electricity consumption of 5 million households. The plant is also expected to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by over 20 million tons per year, which is equivalent to taking 4 million cars off the road. The Taishan nuclear power plant is a milestone in the development of nuclear power technology. The use of the EPR reactor and advanced safety systems demonstrates the industry's commitment to safety and innovation. The construction of the plant was not without its challenges, but the result is a world-class facility that will contribute to China's energy security and the fight against climate change. The success of the Taishan nuclear power plant project shows what can be achieved when international cooperation and expertise are brought together to tackle some of the world's most pressing challenges. Inox CVA, one of the largest manufacturers of double-walled vacuum insulated tanks in the world, has manufactured six gigantic cryogenic tanks measuring 6.6 .6 meters in height and 34 meters in length. Each tank weighs 250 metric tons and has a capacity of 770 cubic meters of LNG. These tanks were manufactured for Crowley Maritime Corporation 
which decided to build two new Conroe ships powered by LNG to significantly reduce air pollution. Jensen Maritime and Wurzel were engaged to design the ship. Eng Marine from Germany was contracted for the design and execution of the LNG marine fuel gas system. Two to three years ago, Chmarine assessed the market for possibilities to buy qualified virtual insulated LNG storage tanks for LNG fueling on the world market. Their assessment on the international market showed that there were only a limited number of potential manufacturers, and finally, Inox CVA was seen as one of their potential fabricators for this kind of tank. Inox CVA was chosen because of its expertise in vacuum insulation technology, critical engineering, and world-class manufacturing infrastructure, which makes it an obvious choice for such complex projects. The project outlined a unique experience in designing and building one of the largest LNG fuel tank systems in the history of the marine industry. The greater challenge was to get the tanks approved by DNVGL Europe, U.S. Coast Guard, and fabricate them in their Condala facility and transport them through logistics all the way to the USA within time. The critical phase was to design the cryogenic tank suspension system along with various operating requirements that would withstand the severe loads and stresses of marine conditions. The tanks were manufactured simultaneously, with the tank connection space equivalent to the height of a two-story building. High-strength steel was used for optimized design of the inner vessel, requiring special welding techniques and welding qualifications from DNVGL experts. Auto GTAW and GMAW processes were used to achieve precise, consistent, and quicker welds. Hydrostatic testing of the inner vessel required close to 800,000 liters of DM water for each tank assembly. The assembly of the inner tank into the outer tank and installation of its suspension system was another crucial operation. Finally, the TCS housing the pumps, valves, instruments, intricate piping supports with hot and cold installations was docked to the tank in almost ready condition. The tanks have inbuilt safety features. Stainless steel was used to construct the outer jacket to contain any possible LNG spill. From the inner tank, all liquid lines have double-walled piping construction to prevent any leaks. The efficient design of the vacuum-insulated cryogenic tanks ensures the LNG hold time in excess of 58 days. The tanks were subjected to rigorous quality control checks and an elaborate quality assurance plan was prepared and followed to perfection. Shop tests include a helium leak test, vacuum retention test, thermographic, and extensive operating checks during factory acceptance. CPE Technologies' involvement in the Santa Lucia Tunnel Project began with the design and manufacturing of key components. Within an impressive time frame of just six months, CPE Technology completed the construction of a steel-framed building, the development of lifting and handling equipment, and the centerpiece of the operation, the carousel plant. This comprehensive approach to in-house production sets the stage for a highly coordinated and efficient tunnel segment manufacturing process. One of the foundational aspects of this production process is the meticulous design of segment molds. Advanced 3D design tools are employed by the engineering team to craft these molds, ensuring not only precision but also immediate structural verification of the assembly. This design phase is critical, as it sets the stage for the subsequent stages of production. Once the molds are designed, specialists engineers take charge of ensuring strict adherence to manufacturing tolerances. The use of 3D controls throughout the entire production process guarantees that each segment meets the exacting standards required for tunnel construction. 
This meticulous attention to detail is vital to ensure the integrity and safety of the tunnel. The production process also involves the design and implementation of hydraulic systems tailored to the client's specifications. These systems play a crucial role in the manipulation and formation of tunnel segments, further emphasizing the tailor-made approach taken by CP Technology to meet specific project requirements. CP Technology has embraced the principles of Factory 4.0, with a focus on minimizing costs and production time while enhancing safety and traceability. This forward-looking approach leverages cutting-edge technology to streamline operations, reduce waste, and optimize resource utilization. In doing so, it not only contributes to the efficiency of the production process, but also positions the company at the forefront of industry innovation. To ensure the quality of the tunnel segments, concrete vibration is utilized during the casting process. Proper vibration is fundamental for achieving a flawless concrete finish and maximizing the amount of concrete that fills the mold during casting. CP Technology offers various vibration options, including electric with inverters or pneumatic vibration, allowing for flexibility in meeting specific project requirements. Safety is paramount in the tunnel segment production process. CP Technology has implemented various safety features to protect workers and ensure smooth operations. One notable innovation is the shutter opening system, which is integrated into the mold. This system not only saves time but also enhances safety, reducing the risk of accidents and improving efficiency. The inclusion of remote control systems, operated via smartphones or PCs, allows for real-time monitoring of production and the prompt resolution of any issues. This proactive approach to safety management ensures that potential faults are addressed as soon as they occur, minimizing downtime and delays. The integrated segment's tilting device is a pivotal element in the process. It facilitates the demolding, tilting, and transportation of segments to a pre-storage area efficiently. Safety brackets are activated during the lifting of segments, ensuring secure handling and reducing the risk of damage. Automatic positioning systems further enhance safety and precision by ensuring perfect alignment in both horizontal and vertical planes. This streamlined approach eliminates the need for intermediate steps, minimizing the risk of damage to segments and reducing the overall stress induced during handling. Research by renowned universities has validated the effectiveness of this system, particularly for large and slender segments. For efficient handling and management of segments, an integrated video control system is employed. This system allows a single operator to oversee the handling of segments to the pre-storage area, improving safety conditions and cost effectiveness. The combination of advanced technology and thoughtful design considerations underscores CP Technology's commitment to safety and efficiency. With three decades of experience in precasting systems and a strong culture of innovation, CP Technology stands as a unique partner in the market, capable of delivering turnkey prefabrication plants with precision. Each step of the production process is subject to rigorous quality checks, ensuring that the final product meets the highest standards of excellence. The Belchin Tunnel is a remarkable feat of engineering situated between Basel and Egerkingen, spanning a length of 3.2 kilometers as it traverses the imposing Jura Mountains. This mountain range is characterized by the prevalence of gypsum marl a type of rock that poses unique challenges due to its propensity to swell upon contact with water, leading to potential structural damage in tunnels. As a result, the existing double-track tunnels, dating back to the 1970s, required urgent renovation, prompting the construction of a third tunnel, aptly named the Renovation Tunnel. To undertake this ambitious project, Heronicht and Marty Technic collaborated to design an extraordinary tunnel boring machine. TBM. This formidable machine not only excavates the tunnel, but also strategically places concrete segments, seals them, and completes the concrete lining, ensuring a strong and durable tunnel structure. 
The tunnel boring head boasts a diameter of nearly 14 meters, making it one of the largest machines of its kind. The A2 Autobahn tunnel had reached its 50-year mark and was in dire need of a comprehensive renovation. To minimize disruptions and prevent traffic chaos during the construction process, Martin, the construction company responsible for the project, devised a clever solution. Building a replacement tunnel adjacent to the existing one while renovating the old tunnel concurrently. This approach required meticulous planning and execution, especially given the challenging rock conditions. The construction process inside the mountain is a fascinating spectacle to behold. The tunnel boring machine, developed by Martin, features cutting wheels that stand at an impressive height of 14 meters. These cutting wheels efficiently break off rock fragments from the surrounding rocks as they rotate, and their arrangement and number are optimized for the specific geology of the Belchin Tunnel. Behind the cutting wheels, injection openings stabilize the excavated material to ensure safety and facilitate swift progress. The machine exerts substantial pressure, pushing forward along the previously built tunnel. The gap between the tunnel and the rock is promptly filled with rapidly curing mortar, ensuring stability and security. At intervals of approximately 2 meters, the tunnel boring machine halts its advancement. While protected by its own shield, the machine constructs a tunnel ring comprising seven segments using the Thuringen method. The tunnel is immediately secured behind the cutting wheels with the completion of the first ring closure. Each segment works under pressure, and the skilled teams can complete an entire tunnel ring in just about 25 minutes. The components used for the construction of the tunnel rings are manufactured in Martin's own factory. High-strength steel fiber reinforced concrete is employed to ensure the tunnel's durability, even without the need for external reinforcement. To achieve various tunnel curvatures, there are 13 different positions available, and the sequence of delivery determines the tunnel's curvature during assembly on the machine. The work within the tunnel relies significantly on air pressure control, directly influencing the ongoing construction. An efficient conveyor belt system transports the excavated material away from the tunnel, continually extending as the machine progresses. Due to the risk of rock swelling, Martin takes extra precautions by building an additional massive inner shell within the tunnel behind the initial excavation security. Importantly, these additional works must not interrupt the transportation and disposal of the tunnel boring machine. The construction process involves multiple stages. Initially, the lower tunnel section is prepared and an Inosco seal is installed to ensure the tunnel's water tightness. One lane remains open for construction traffic in the middle. The tunnel floor is then concreted and the concrete work takes place near the overpass bridge. Formwork for the concrete work is hung movably under the bridge, allowing for efficient and smooth progress. The concrete is pumped into place and 10 meter formwork sections are concreted daily. The concrete is produced on site in a mobile plant and simultaneous reinforcement placement prepares for the next concrete stage before sealing off the section. The process of constructing the tunnel vault is also meticulously executed. Ventilation of the tunnel is facilitated through ventilation ducts suspended from the vault. The conveyor belt, which operates smoothly without obstructions, is also suspended from the vault. To accommodate the swelling gypsum cuper, manual labor is required in this area, as prefabricated approach maps cannot be used. Following this phase, the vault is concreted with the help of highly flexible formwork that adapts to different wall thicknesses. The coordination and smooth operation of the specialized equipment, designed by Martin and produced in their own workshop, are central to the success of the construction. The company's experienced engineers, along with close collaboration with the metal workshop, ensure the production of high-quality machinery and equipment. Additionally, the complex control systems are also developed in-house and delivered to the construction site. The Belchin Tunnel is not just a construction marvel. It is a testament to human ingenuity and determination in overcoming geological challenges. The expertise of the engineers and workers involved in the project, coupled with the innovative technology and equipment, 
has made the construction of this vital transportation link through the Jura Mountains a resounding success. The Julius Nyerere Hydropower Project stands as a monumental feat of engineering nestled within the heart of the United Republic of Tanzania, a nation rich in natural beauty and resources, Positioned strategically on the meandering course of the Rufiji River, this project is a beacon of progress, innovation, and sustainable energy generation for the region. The Rufiji River, hailed as the longest river in Tanzania, snakes its way through the landscape, its waters embracing a vast catchment area spanning 184,000 square kilometers. However, it is within the controlled catchment area upstream of the dam site, where the Julius Nyerere Hydropower Project exerts its transformative influence, covering an extensive 158,000 square kilometers. The river's rhythm is harnessed here, where its flow and runoff serve as the lifeblood of this ambitious endeavor. At the heart of the project lies a gargantuan roller compacted concrete, RCC, gravity dam, a testament to human ingenuity and cooperation with nature. This monumental structure, standing as a guardian against the river's might, reaches a towering maximum height of 134.0 meters, poised elegantly against the backdrop of the Tanzanian landscape. This formidable dam is not merely a barrier, it is a gateway to progress. Its creation has brought forth a reservoir, and with it, a new way of life for those who rely on its services. Stretching beyond the dam, a network of power waterways elegantly weaves through the terrain, a modern-day labyrinth guiding the river's energy towards its final destination. This journey culminates in a ground powerhouse that stands steadfast on the river's right bank. Here, technology and nature coalesce as turbines spin to generate power, transforming the river's kinetic energy into a sustainable source of vitality for the nation. The numbers speak volumes, a total installed capacity of 2,115 megawatts and an annual power generation of 6,307 gigawatt hours, a symphony of numbers that compose a brighter future for Tanzania. And yet, the Julius Nyerere Hydropower Project is not just about power, it is about sustenance and growth. As its waters are directed with precision and care, they breathe life into arid lands, nurturing fields that bloom with possibility. Irrigation flow courses through the landscape, granting sustenance to crops and by extension, to the communities that have thrived alongside this river for generations. The meticulous planning extends beyond the physical structures themselves. A reservoir with a carefully calibrated normal operation level of 184.0 meters above sea level stands as a testament to the delicate balance maintained between man and nature. This reservoir does not merely hold water, it holds promise, potential, and the key to progress. In this pursuit of progress, safety remains paramount. The Julius Nyerere Hydropower Project adheres to international standards with the recommended guidelines for safety inspection of dams issued by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers serving as a benchmark. The project's magnitude and impact classify it as a large endeavor, a beacon of modernity and innovation that draws the world's attention to Tanzania's southeastern reaches. The spillway, a vital component, is designed to withstand even the most formidable challenges. It is tested against the probable maximum flood, PMF, with the flood level set at a commanding 189.10 meters, a testament to the resilience woven into the project's very fabric. As the Tanzanian landscape transforms to accommodate progress, the Julius Nyerere Hydropower Project emerges as a testament to human potential and cooperation with the environment. It is more than concrete and turbines, it is a symphony of engineering, sustainability, and hope echoing through generations to come. And all of this, situated just 350 kilometers from the bustling coastal city of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania's thriving heartbeat. The ambitious project to extend Monaco's urban footprint into the sea, 
spearheaded by the Weak Principalities Public Works Department, stands as a testament to innovative construction techniques aimed at minimizing environmental impact. This groundbreaking initiative entails the creation of six hectares of new land in the sea, achieved primarily through maritime construction methods. At its core, the project revolves around a newly formed landmass enclosed by a reinforced concrete caisson belt, resting on underwater embankments and housing a vibrant entertainment port. The journey towards this monumental achievement commenced back in 2014 with a collaborative effort involving key partners, Tractable Andromeda Oceanology and Achi. Together, this consortium embarked on an exhaustive environmental impact assessment, identifying potential challenges and devising strategies to integrate environmental considerations into the project's design and execution. Prior to even breaking ground, preliminary actions were initiated to demonstrate the commitment to preserving the marine ecosystem. These initial steps included the relocation of 143 great nacre organisms from the Larvato Marine Reserve, the eradication of the invasive green algae taxifolia, the transplantation of 518 square meters of seagrass species, and the installation of continuous turbidity monitoring devices and underwater anti-turbidity screens. The project's first phase involved repurposing the upper layer of a port outlet duct, a step towards realizing the vision of an eco-district. This was followed by intricate dredging operations aimed at addressing polluted sediments. Advanced equipment facilitated the removal and transportation of these sediments to a dedicated treatment and recycling center near Toulon. Meanwhile, Non-polluted sediments were meticulously deposited in carefully chosen locations to safeguard marine life. The process of building the replacement embankments commenced on the rocky seabed itself. Sourcing materials from the Shadownuf Quarry, the construction team undertook the delicate task of material transportation. A sophisticated robotic pipe system streamlined the process, ensuring materials reached the seabed with precision. Once in place, Submersible vibrators were employed to compact and adjust the embankment, contributing to its stability and longevity. Concurrently, in the bustling port of Marseille, the construction of the protective caisson belt began, comprising 18 massive reinforced concrete caissons, each weighing a staggering 10,000 tons. This belt was pivotal in delineating the boundaries of the forthcoming eco-district. The process commenced with the continuous casting of these colossal caissons within a floating steel structure referred to as key shoes. As the casting proceeded, the caissons' weight increased, enabling them to gradually submerge into the water. Once prepared, they were towed to Monaco, where they were ballasted with seawater and filled with quarry materials, enhancing their stability and structural integrity. A significant milestone in the project was reached on July 10, 2019, with the successful completion of the Kaisen Belt construction. This achievement paved the way for the actual construction of the land area to commence. The landmass, constructed using quarry materials ranging from 0 to 50 millimeters, was meticulously placed utilizing specialized transport boats equipped with conveyors spanning the Kaisen Belt. This intricate operation required precision and coordination, exemplifying the technical prowess involved in offshore urbanization. In the subsequent phases, the platform underwent additional soil treatment and reinforcement, enhancing its robustness and durability. These essential steps prepared the platform to serve as the foundation for the awe-inspiring eco-district of Portier Cove, this visionary endeavor harmonized cutting-edge construction techniques with a staunch commitment to environmental preservation, culminating in a remarkable offshore extension that serves as a testament to Monaco's forward-looking approach to urban development. Urban Rigor, a groundbreaking project that merges sustainability, urban living, and innovative design, came to life through the collaborative efforts of Arslef, a Danish construction company. The venture began in September 2018 with the construction of five concrete floating pontoons, each designed to create unique and environmentally friendly urban housing options. 
The final pontoon was completed in April 2019 and embarked on a journey to Denmark, marking the completion of this visionary endeavor. At the core of Urban Rigor's concept lies the repurposing of maritime structures to address the increasing challenges of urban housing and environmental concerns. Each unit consists of a floating pontoon with a design that maximizes both space and sustainability. The modular design incorporates multiple levels with a 220 square meters bottom deck, boasting a thickness of 25 centimeters. This foundation serves as the base for the innovative living spaces that sit atop it. The exterior of the floating dwellings features walls with a thickness of 20 centimeters, contributing to stability and energy efficiency. The interior walls are 15 centimeters thick, providing insulation in a cozy living environment. The deck, measuring 20 centimeters in thickness, supports the upper floors while accommodating shared spaces and relaxation areas, with a height of 3.2 meters on the lower side and 3.62 meters on the upper side. The urban rigor units offer a spacious and open atmosphere. The clever design not only optimizes space, but also considers the aesthetic and practical aspects of living on water. The hull of each urban rigor unit carries a significant weight 250 tons without the deck and 330 tons in total. This robust construction ensures the stability and longevity of these innovative living spaces, while also allowing for easy transportation and placement on various water bodies, urban rigor exemplifies a fusion of sustainability and architectural innovation, addressing the increasing need for urban housing while minimizing the ecological footprint. By repurposing concrete pontoons and adapting them for contemporary living, the project stands as a testament to human ingenuity and the potential for harmonious coexistence with our environment. The Argyle Diamond Mine, a unique marvel located in the stunning East Kimberley region of Western Australia, holds a distinct position in the world of diamond mining. It is renowned for producing over 90% of the world's captivating pink diamonds, a feat that has made it a pivotal player in the global diamond industry. Let's delve into the fascinating story of this extraordinary mine. Nestled within the remote Kimberley region, the Argyle Diamond Mine stands as a testament to human ingenuity and perseverance. The mine site, spanning about 50 hectares, takes on a linear form stretching approximately 1,600 meters in length and varying from 150 to 600 meters in width. In its earlier days, Argyle employed open pit techniques, reaching depths of up to 600 meters. However, a significant shift occurred in 2010 when the open cut operations ceased and the mine transitioned to a fully underground setup utilizing block cave mining methods. The mine's geographical location is both intriguing and challenging. Situated in the Matsu Ranges, southwest of Lake Argyle, it is approximately 550 kilometered, 340 mils, southwest of Darwin. The mine's isolation led to the establishment of a comprehensive residential camp on site, accommodating the dedicated workforce. Remarkably, many of the 520 workers commuted from Perth, a staggering distance of over 2,000 kilometers, 1,200 miles, for alternating two-week shifts at the mine. The Argyle Diamond Mine embraced the local community, promoting local employment and fostering the involvement of indigenous individuals. The Argyle Diamond Mine holds the distinction of being the first commercial non-alluvial diamond mine not situated atop a kimberlite pipe. The pipe, aptly named Alaska One, but commonly referred to as the Argyle Pipe, is a volcanic diatreme composed of olivine lamproite, manifesting as tuff and lava. Around the pipe's periphery, the lamproite blends with a volcanic breccia, a mixture of shattered wall rock fragments resulting from the volcanic eruption. The volcanic action also led to the formation of various minerals, including zeolite minerals, micas, kaolinite, and clays, indicative of post-eruption hydrothermal processes. 
The Argyle Pipe emerged from a violent eruption of lamproite magma through a zone of geological weakness within the Earth's crust. The diamonds found within this remarkable geological feature have been dated to around 1.58 billion years, while the pipe's volcanic origins date back to approximately 1.1 to 1.2 billion years. This relatively short time frame allowed for diamond formation, possibly explaining the smaller average size and unique physical attributes of Argyle diamonds. Among its diverse gem quality output, Argyle primarily produced brown diamonds. To enhance the marketability of these gems, Rio Tinto orchestrated a successful decade-long campaign to market them as champagne and cognac-toned diamonds. In contrast, the mine faced no challenges in selling diamonds with hues of pink, purple, and red, which are exceptionally rare and in high demand, thus commanding premium prices. Despite the predominance of lower-quality diamonds, with only 5% being gem quality, Compared to the global average of 20%, Argyle held an exclusive role as the principal source of pink and red diamonds, making up 90-95% to of the world's supply. Most Argyle diamonds were classified as Type 1A, characterized by low levels of nitrogen impurities. Their unique coloring arose from structural defects within the crystal lattice. The Metropolitan Mine Underground, Owned by Peabody Energy is a coal mine located near Hellingsburg, New South Wales, Australia. The mine has a long history dating back to its opening in 1887 by the Cumberland Coal and Iron Mining Company. Over the years, it has changed ownership and undergone expansions, making it a significant player in the coal industry. One of its major projects was the Metropolitan Coal Project, approved in 2009, which allowed for the expansion of the mine's operations. Under the ownership of Peabody Energy Australia's subsidiary, Hellingsburg Coal, the Metropolitan Mine underwent a significant expansion as part of the Metropolitan Coal Project. This expansion resulted in the ramping up of coal production, with the mine yielding approximately 2 million tons, 1.4 million tons, of hard and semi-hard coking coal. Notably, around 90% of the coal extracted from Metropolitan Mine is exported to steel manufacturers and industrial consumers in countries such as Japan, India, Brazil, and Germany. The remaining coking coal is transported to domestic steel producers within Australia. The strategic location of the Metropolitan Mine is highlighted by its connection to the Illawarra Railway Line via a spur line facilitating the transportation of coal to the nearby Port Kembla for export. Port Kembla serves as a crucial gateway for the mine's coal exports, enabling efficient global distribution to the aforementioned steel-producing nations. However, the mine's operations have also raised concerns and controversies over the years. One significant issue is the mining activity taking place underneath the protected special area of the Warrenora Reservoir catchment, which lies directly beneath the reservoir itself. This situation has sparked worries about potential adverse impacts on water quality and the risk of subsidence damage. In 2020, a petition signed by over 10,000 people drew attention to the potential risks associated with long-wall coal mining under Warrenora Dam. The petition expressed concerns about the damage caused by previous mining activities within the reservoir catchment area. Water NSW, the governing body responsible for water management in New South Wales, noted the negative impact of previous long-wall mines, LWs 23-27, on the eastern tributary of the Warata rivulet, including surface cracking and drying of pools. The petition further cited concerns about the drying out of vital swamps that play a role in filtering and cleaning the water supply. Additionally, there were reports of fractured riverbeds and drained pools in the main part of the rivulet due to mining activities. The petition called on the government to uphold the standards set by the Water NSW Act 2014 and protect the water supply by preventing further mining activities in the Warrenora catchment area. The petitioners voiced their skepticism about the effectiveness of proposed remediation efforts, such as injecting polyurethane into cracks. 
Despite these concerns, the petition was debated in the New South Wales State Parliament in 2020, where it faced opposition from both the Labour and Liberal National Party politicians. In 2022, the Metropolitan Colliery gained notoriety for its environmental impact on Australia's oldest national park. The mine was reported to have discharged coal sludge and waste into a creek that feeds into the Hacking River, a water body that runs through the national park and eventually flows into Port Hacking. This incident garnered widespread media attention across major Australian news outlets, shedding light on the complex environmental challenges associated with coal mining activities. The history and operations of the Metropolitan Mine Underground reflect both its significance within the global coal market and the contentious issues surrounding its environmental impact. The balance between economic benefits and environmental considerations continues to be a subject of debate, with stakeholders seeking to find sustainable solutions that safeguard both the local ecosystem and the global demand for coal resources. The CAT HW300 Highwall Mining System is a groundbreaking method that connects underground and surface mining endeavors, demonstrating the versatility of modern mining equipment. This innovative system, developed by Caterpillar, offers a safe and efficient way to extract coal from outcropping seams across a diverse range of applications. It stands as a cost-effective alternative to traditional mining techniques, boasting the capacity to produce substantial quantities of coal, ranging from 40,000 to 110,000 tons, 44,000 to 121,000 tons per month, contingent upon the seam's height. Operating at the forefront of the mining industry, the CAT HW300 Highwall Mining System exemplifies advanced capabilities, with a minimal crew of three to four individuals, the system attains an average productivity of 27 to 36 tons, 30 to 40 tons per man hour. The technology empowers miners to access otherwise unreachable coal reserves without resorting to traditional underground methods, thereby maximizing resource recovery while minimizing operational expenses. The process begins with a narrow bench or trench that the CAT HW300 maneuvers on, only requiring 20 meters of contour benching for the track mobile miner to access the coal deposit. The machine inserts 20-foot-long push beams behind the cutter head, extending up to 1,000 feet 300 meters, into the seam. A critical feature of the system is its ability to establish secure anchorage through its own drills and pins, providing stability for the ensuing mining actions. Central to the mining process are the robust cat push beams, capable of pushing and pulling the cutter head, which aids in the extraction of coal. These push beams can be stacked on site, and the transfer mechanism is highly automated, enhancing mining efficiency. The HW300's main body travels parallel to the high wall, inserting the cutter module into the coal seam while leaving pillars for overburden support. The system's cutter module, based on decades of underground mining experience, adapts to seam heights ranging from 0.7 to 4.6 meters, 2.3 to 15.1 feet. Caterpillar's continuous miners influence the design, which ensures efficient coal cutting even from the surface. The HW300's cab boasts an intuitive graphical touchscreen interface, providing operators with real-time information and control. This high-wall mining solution incorporates automation with continuous monitoring of cutter motor current, fiber optical metering, and gamma ray detection, allowing the system to operate in automated mining mode. Hydraulic and electric power control cables, along with water lines, are sheltered within a durable reel and chain housing, which unrolls and retracts during mining. Caterpillar's high-wall mining system seamlessly integrates its proven mining equipment, including customized wheel loaders, stacker belt units, power generators, and more, to provide a comprehensive solution that caters to specific high-wall mining operations.